Dom here from Essential RC. Thanks for tuning in. If you've been following the channel a little while, you will have seen that I recently acquired a petrol powered Vans RV4, quite a big model. Flown that three or four times now and flies really, really well. Nice and stable in the air, easy to take off, easy to land, mild aerobatics, and I'm learning. Every aircraft is different and uh, exploring how aerobatic that is. But if you've been following the channel even longer, you will know that I have this real passion and enthusiasm for converting some aeroplanes, whether they actually, whether they be jets, warbirds, gliders, whatever, to FPV. And that's become really easy recently, I, I think, uh, particularly uh, even more immersive because uh, head tracked movement of the camera in the cockpit is even easier now. Um, you can do that with um, several systems uh, that are out there now. You don't have to cobble together kind of a 3D printed gimbal to do that. And there are several head trackers out there now. Um, my easiest solution is by using the, the uh, Cadax Walk Snail Goggles L because it's um, integrated into, into the goggles. You don't have to buy a separate head tracker to go on the side. Um, <clears throat> that plus flight controllers. iNav has become more mature and it's easier to set up now. It's, uh, it's a really easy bit of um, firmware to configure now with their configurator and to flash it onto a flight controller. But what I'm trying to do more recently is to make the cockpit more realistic. Um, and there are guys out there who are doing this to an extreme level. I have to say, even replicating the full-size aircraft in regards to the cockpit. And I don't think <clears throat> I don't think I will ever get close to that. But I, I would like to now. I've got more time on my hands. But one thing I have been interested in, and one thing I did try three years ago, is a multi-function display, an MFD, that shows you real-time telemetry on the, on, the, um, on the camera as you're flying. Now, I did try that with a system from RC Gages, I think it was, three years ago, and it had its problems. There were focus problems, and there were, was a flicker problem. Um, because, and the flicker problem was because of the mismatch between the camera and its shutter speed, DJI version one of their camera, FPV camera at the time, and the MFD display itself. There was a mismatch, so it, was a, uh, it, it didn't look very good. And I didn't know that before I bought it, it was quite irritating, and then the, uh, the manufacturer said, well, what you need to do is to put an ND filter on the camera to change the shutter speed and get them more closely aligned to force the different shutter speed on the camera. And that kind of made it look better. But it still didn't look that great, still wasn't that bright, and the focus was still a problem. Now the focus problem is because all of these FPV cameras, well the mainstream, the main brand FPV cameras are fixed focus. They're really fixed focus for, you know, looking out into the distance, and not really for close up looking at something that's in the cockpit. Real problem um, for, for that. And three years later, uh, you may have noticed there are a couple of other new players on the, the market for these MFDs. So Kairos, I hope I'm saying that right, is one. Um, and I got a couple of, of, their, um, of their screens here. And also FPV toys, I think FPV toys as well. I haven't tried that, but I will do in the, in the near future, I think, to see how, how that works. But with the Kairos um, one, I ordered this and it, it arrived after three, three or four weeks. I think they've been inundated with, with demand, which, uh, and I'm not surprised because it, it does look really good. I have to say their, their videos are quite compelling and I probably didn't read as much as the blurb as I should have should have done. And you see FPV, you know, displays, and you think, wow, you know, three years on, I've got to try that again. Surely the technology has improved after three years, and those displays should look a lot better through an FPV camera. Now, disappointingly, no, I have to say. Um, I tried it out of the box, plugged it all together. 
put it into the Vans RV4 and you'll see that you know the default kind of distance how you where you would want it to be for the so the size of the display looks quite good in the camera it was again way out of focus no flicker problems which was great fantastic so the shutter speed the the shutter speed is obviously matching the frequency of the mfd the oled which was which is good but a real focus problem so how to solve that well i did go on the um the i now fix wing facebook page and drop a message you know has, has anybody else got practical experience of using these mfds have i wasted my money and i thought that's a legit question you know i'm a customer i, I bought them and i thought you know is there any is, is there anyone else out there who has solved this focus problem because as far as i knew there's no way of adding a different lens or to change the behavior of the lens in the modern DJI 03 or 04 or in, on any of the Walksdale Cadex cameras. Now, I'm using Cadex, as, as I said, and it didn't look too good. So overnight, I did think, how can I solve this problem? Well, what I can't do is I can't change the focal length and the focus parameters of the Walksdale camera. But I thought, Maybe, and because of my age, and my sight is deteriorating, not ashamed to admit that, I do wear glasses. Is there something I can add between the camera and the MFD display to make it look bigger? And you can. So I went on Amazon um, and had a search and came up with these, um, these sheets magnifying sheets um, I, I guess some people out there are using these but I thought well what if I place these in between the camera and the MFD will that help let me show you the results okay so here's my Vans RV4 let's put the camera down there And you'll see the uh, the transparent canopy over the top. Bought a new one of those, so it doesn't have too many scratches. The old one did. But what I've done is I've cut down that transparent magnifying sheet and put it into a 3D printed frame at what I think is the correct distance based on experimentation between the camera and the MFD. Now, let me just switch this on. I'll quickly show you inside the inside here. So you can see the Kairos, well you can see the receiver in there, the flight controller that's providing the telemetry and the Kairos uh, is system is plugged into a spare UART on that configured as Mavlink and then those leads go up to into the cockpit and then I've got power provided to the gimbal and the VTX Cadex uh, VTX air unit and that is also connected into the flight controller so let's plug that in okay so everything powered up so you can see the MFDs working but can you see the magnifying effect now this is through my production camera And one thing I'll show you all the, all the data that's being displayed there, absolutely fantastic, I have to say, it does look very, very good. But how good does it look through the FPV camera? 
This is the question, how good will it look in the air? And there you go. So it being slightly magnified really does help. But notice that if I do take this out, that's how small it looks. And that's it in focus, but too far away. This is the thing, can't change the focal length of the camera. And it looks pretty good there, but it's too far away. It's still not readable because it's too far, far away. But if I add the magnifying sheet back in place, it looks fantastic. And the magnifying sheet, because it's cut down, and I've cut it down to the arc of the front of the airframe, it won't hinder my view as I'm flying. Pretty good, I think. Okay, so this is what you get out of the box with the Kairos um, system. Um, the screens are in this, two, and there are two screens with each one. The leads for the screens to plug them into this board. And then you've got the configuration buttons. And I will add that once you've got these screens running, and connected into your flight controller <clears throat> there's a lot of configuration that you can do if the screens are getting all the telemetry you can set the different units for speed and altitude and all and distance and all that and there are different warnings alerts you can do for uh, low altitude high altitude uh, and things like that and that is all settable via the buttons but putting this together, super, super simple, I have to say, they've made it, even though they say, watch out for the polarity that you put the, of how you put these things together, you can't really go wrong. So the, let's do the buttons first. So the buttons, well, they go into the, the buttons uh, connection, which is this one here. Again, it says buttons here, so you can't really go wrong. Then you've got the screens undo this it should be fairly obvious so the sh I think that one is for something else probably to go to the flight controller so again you can't go wrong with this incidentally their video I think showed it a little bit different I think particularly the positive and negative were the other way around but don't worry it is correct and you, if you're paranoid, you can actually check and you'll see these labels, the V for the volt, volts, the power, G for ground. So it is the correct polarity, don't, don't worry. Okay, so that's the leads plugged into the screens and, that, and the screens now we plug those into the board. Uh, screen one and two. And you could change these around if you, in the cockpit you want them the other way around. And then this last lead is the one that um, is for ground and volts and RX and TX. And this goes to a spare UR on your flight controller. So plug that into the, the bottom there. Actually, it's the other end. <laughs> there. Now, you may find that that is, uh, I think if it's, on some flight controllers, that might plug straight in, like Speedy B, I think they show. But on, I use Matek flight controllers mostly, mostly, so I had to change this uh, for a different type of connector, just a little bit of crimping to do after taking that plug off. And then that is it. Then you just have to secure that into your, into your cockpit, into your fuselage, and you're done. So that's my update on my Vans RV4 FPV conversion project. Uh, hoping I'm going to be flying this for the first time at the end of the week. And we'll see what it actually looks like in the air and how the telemetry looks on the Kairos um, system as I'm flying around. Look out for that video soon. But thanks for watching this update and see you soon. Bye.